I hope for your vote. Thanks. I'd like now to introduce or uh, have Bruce Schulte come up District 21 and then on cue there Russ Miller that he would uh, get to do for uh, online speaking. And again, it's five minutes apiece. Thanks. All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Bruce Schulte, District 21, and I'm running for party chair. Um, I'm not going to bore you with my resume. I think a lot of you saw that floating around the room earlier, um, my professional resume. Um, so uh, I think you got the Reader's Digest version of it uh, already. We're all here today out of a shared commitment to common goals. Um, sometimes we get wrapped up in a few issues that, that divide us, and um, you know, we, spend a little bit, we spend a lot of energy on that. Now, I grew up in a large family, so I'm used to that. But um, I would prefer that we spend our energy on the problems on which we agree. Because the, tr the true opposition is not in this room. The people that, that we should be opposed to are the current occupant of the White House and those Democrats around the state that, that we disagree with. And, and I'd like to see most of them unemployed next year. Um, I, I want to share with you a little insight I had yesterday. So I, I was babbling on about this to some of my, my friends and, and other delegates. I was in the nominations committee, and uh, the strangest thing happened. I walked in there expecting a pitch knife fight, and it didn't happen. Instead, what I saw was a group of diverse Republicans with differing interests come together, together, and solving a shared problem. And it was, it was, it was really kind of uh, inspiring. I, I was encouraged because I walked out of there believing that when we put our minds to it, we could all pull together and achieve a common goal. And I really, I really had, I mean, for the first time in the last week or so, I really had high hopes and, and, and uh, optimism for the Alaska Republican Party going forward. Um, I just want to share that with you because that, that really, that made my day, to be honest with you. Now, uh, redistricting has presented us with a terrific opportunity, and, and I, I, I'm just going to give a nod to, uh, to Randy and um, Steve Colligan for shepherding that process through. It was brutal, but I think that we've really come out of that in a good position. It's an opportunity, but we've got to seize that opportunity and make use of it. Um, there's a number of incumbent and uh, first-time uh, candidates right here in this room. At the end of the day, our focus needs to be on getting those people elected. Because otherwise, you know, we have little reason to even exist as a party. Um, now, it's going to take a lot of energy, it's going to take a lot of time, and it's going to take a boatload of money. That's, that's, that's undeniable. I think all those, all those candidates can, can affirm that. Now, we're all volunteers here working toward common goals. Um, I would like to be your volunteer in chief. Um, with your help, I want to see all these candidates elected and, uh, and get, get right-minded to last time elected. Now, the gentleman earlier asked about you know, my response to what happened last night. And, and, and let me repeat to you kind of the, the, the sentiment I shared with folks of, of, of all uh, opinions. Um, I respect differing opinions. We're a very diverse group. I mean, you, you've got to be willing to have civil discussions about these things, and, and, I'm, and I'm all for that. Um, Deliberately embarrassing a visiting senator from another state, I thought was unconscionable. It made us all look bad. And it, made, it made us look bad here, it made us look bad at the hotel, it made us look bad at the media. And that bothers me. We can't do it. We, we can disagree internally. But we, that's, that's family business. We gotta, we gotta keep that amongst ourselves. And, and at the end of the day, we do have to work together. My name is Bruce Schulte, I'm running for party chair, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Okay, and uh, we're looking for Russ uh, Miller. Uh, is he in route? All right. Hello, my name is Russ Millette. <coughs> Spell the same as Gillette with an M. It's easier to remember. The school they call me Mr. M, which is easier for them to remember. I'm running for state party chair, and I'm for life. I'm pro life, I'm Second Amendment, and I'm for legalizing freedom and liberty. I believe in a strong military defense, and I'm against nation building. 
I was born and raised in Southern California. My first campaign for presidential nominee was in 1964. And I was a campaign precinct chairman for Barry Goldwater, and I wasn't old enough to vote. I campaigned for him in Southern California Democratic District. And to me, he's still a hero. Along with the memory of Barry Goldwater, a great Republican. Being born and raised in Southern California, I'd much rather live in Alaska. <laughs> I want to give you a little bit about my background and, and resume, and then I'll hit on a couple of issues that are important to me. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in History from Masters College in New Hall, California. I arrived in Sitka, Alaska in 1975 with my family, at that time, three. My wife and I, Tish, between us, have a blended family of eight children and 13 grandchildren, and they all know how to vote. <laughs> and they all work for a living. Yeah. Yeah. They were taught a biblical concept, if you don't vote, you, excuse me, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> They've all lived by that. <clears throat> In 1975, when I arrived in Alaska, I worked for Sheldon Jackson College in Sitka, which is no longer a college, unfortunately. It has to compete against the state system of education. I traveled all over the state, wherever there was a high school, with the exception of the Aleutian Islands, which is the only place I haven't been. When I traveled all over the state for Sheldon Jackson College, I traveled in the winter. I've been in uh, Unifly when the wind was blowing 60 miles an hour and the temperature was 60 below zero. So therefore, the wind charts didn't measure the temperature, but I did. It was very, very, very bone cold. Had a lot of friends uh, throughout the state, <clears throat> and part of that, I was in youth ministry in the East Coast. 1978, I moved my family to Anchorage, Alaska, worked for a small company in computer maintenance. In 1982, I began a career in advertising with GTE directory, so maybe you may remember that if you're in the business. I moved to Atlanta in 1996 and worked for Bell South and also did small business consulting. In 2005, I moved back home to Alaska and I'm not leaving again. <laughs> At least if I have anything to say about it, it was my wife's idea to move up here and she'd never been up here before. So God bless her, she still has some complaints. She thinks this is the most beautiful place she's ever been and the True Gas Mountains are the most beautiful mountains she's ever seen, which I have to agree. You know, over 20 years of experience in advertising, I said, I'm married to my wife, Tish. We have eight children, and all of our children know how to work. Every presidential year since I've been voting, I have been told, without exception, that Russ, we've got to vote for candidate A so we can get rid of candidate B. Well, I'm trying to get the bell over. Yeah. I never took that advice from the time I was 15 years old. I've always voted my conscience on principle, and consequently, I've always been able to sleep at night. Some of the men I voted for, as I said in 1964, I wanted to vote for Barry Goldwater, and they told me if I did, I'd get war. I wanted to vote for Barry Goldwater, and guess what we got? We got war. Nine more years of it, instead of nine weeks of it. I helped Ronald Reagan become president, and I helped Ronald Reagan become governor. Some of the men I voted for have been Ronald Reagan, Jay Hammond, Wally Hippel, Tom Fink, C.I. Lewis, Dan Solomon, Mr. Tom Cuddy, and Joe Miller. Very proud of you. When I look at a candidate, I look at who they support and who they don't support. Who supports them and who doesn't support them. Then I watch what they do and I do my homework and then I vote. So, thank you. Elected leaders are not dictators, they're elected to serve. Thank you. Chair recognizes, uh, actually, we have the vice chair here, and he 
who's going to take me here. Thank you. Pam Rager, District 16. Is it possible to give the district uh, location for each one of these new names that are up there so that it's consistent? Thank you. Point, point board, Chair. Let's go ahead. The, pre the previous candidate did not uh, speak to the earlier motion about uh, whether he condoned last night's activities. Excuse me, it was not a motion, it was a request. Thank you. Could you state your name and district? Rex Shadding, District 11, restated <clears throat> the candidate failed or the candidate neglected to address last night. That was my. It's not an order, thank you. Now the next candidate, proceed, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to proceed through the list now. We've got the vice chairs coming up. If we can get in order and kind of stacked up so we can get things moving, start with Debbie Brown, then we're going to go to Edgar Weidel, and then Edna DeVries uh, will be after that. Uh, uh, just kind of get ready to go here so we can get this moving. Thanks. Strong, viable, and second to none, 
Alaska standing record of exemplary stewardship of the land demonstrates that responsible development of your resources is compatible with our unique environment. And I believe those statements and will stand behind them. You can count on me. Elect me as your vice chairman and I will work really, really hard like I have done. Plenty of folks in the room know that I am a campaigner. I know how to do it. I can help. I have the experience of various capacities at the local level in district Republican business and I can help people learn about what to do at the district level to make everything work well and win for Republican candidates. I'm committed to it. Thank you for your vote.
Good morning. My name is Edna DeVries, and um, I am running for your vice chair. Um, I liked what Steve said last night when he was in his party remarks as vice chair. He said his first thing that he said every morning was to the chair, how is your health and how are you doing? And so um, that will, of course, be one of my main goals is to support the chairman as well as to support the SCC and support all to tell you a little bit more, there's some information on the tables for you, and I'll weave some of that in as I talk to you this morning. I am a stickler for rules. Yeah, I am currently District 8 Chairman and also President of the Valley Republican Women in the Valley, and serve on the City Council for the City of Palmer. All of those organizations will tell you, and especially in our District 8 Convention, I had the privilege of asking and him saying yes to have the former Attorney General of the State of Alaska, Talis Colbert, come and be our parliamentarian and our rules. And every time there was a question, I would say, tell us, what do the rules say? Because I feel that we are a country of laws, and we must obey those laws. Chairman from District 8, then I will abide by those because they are the rules. Anybody that lives in the valley or drives from Anchorage to the valley knows the speed limit is 65. How many of you in this room, if you drive there, you drive 65? Uh, too many, I don't think, right? They go about 80. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> I'm probably right behind you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Aaron Morse. I am 
I'm a father of four, and uh, I've been in Alaska on and off since 1986. I graduated from Kenai Central High School, attended the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and I have a business degree from the school management there. I am an uh, Alaskan entrepreneur. I have a company that's about three and a half years old and have one of the few technology startups in the state. I got involved with um, politics as an adult in 2008 uh, during the last presidential cycle. Um, I was supportive of Ron Paul. I gave him a bunch of money and uh, got involved. And um, a gentleman by the name of Bill Moll, who I think is a giant, or was a giant, in the Republican Party, uh, he took me under his wing. And in a very inclusive way, um, kind of brought me, brought me into uh, an understanding of how things work and where to go. And speaking to communications, um, I was really upset last summer because um, Bill passed in June, and I found out in September when an email went out to the District 21 Executive Committee, and his name wasn't on it. And I was like, well, what happened to our chairman? And He'd had a heart attack, and I had missed, um, I missed everything. So I would ask um, that we take a moment, silence, honor Bill. Thank you. I had uh, made a commitment, and I'll keep that commitment, to the leadership of the Ron Paul delegation that I would withdraw my candidacy if their nominations were accepted. And so I, I want to do that. Um, at the same time, I would like to state that I disavow uh, any knowledge or uh, endorsement of what happened last night. I think it was uh, shameful. We, um, we, have to we have to respect each other and assume positive intent. And, and those two things are kind of the basis of trust. And with trust, we have the ability to move forward. There are a lot of opportunities to streamline what's happening around us. The, uh, the bending could have been done in advance. There's, there's no reason I could have not been done in advance. The, the voting could be digital, and we could have uh, the process streamlined a great deal. I, I can help with that, and uh, and I would <laughs> I would like to, um, in whatever capacity, continue to help move the Republican Party forward in the state of Alaska. And thank you for not voting for me.
And my claim to fame would be that I'm the other half of Dwayne and Christine Hill. We've been married for 25 years and have two children. And uh, we're the owner uh, of Alaska Auction Company and Dwayne's Antique Market. And we've been established here for, I've been here for 20 years, no, I've been here for almost 30 years, and same with my husband. And in response to last, and my, as far as in, in addressing my computer skills, I can turn the computer on and make it do what I want it to do. Uh, beyond that, I don't really get into uh, software and how it works or any of that matter. And I may not be the very the fastest or the best in any of that in, when it comes to that, but I certainly do use the computer more than I really would like to in everyday life. I may be behind that computer much longer than I'd like to be actually in my own business. And addressing to what occurred last night, I would like to honor and I'd like to recognize our leaders of the Republican Party and how they dealt with the matter. Randy Rudrick, Steve, Frank McCurry, and then there was also Susan Zuchetti at our table that went up there to address this problem and smoothly handle it and take care of it. I was very, very impressed on how they dealt with that. I have been very impressed as far as in just the short time that I've been dealing with the party, with the Republican Party, um, how well they deal with all these different issues and problems that are going on. It is, um, it is humbling and I am learning from all the leaders that we have, including Glenn Clary too, as far as how they deal with all these different things that are going on. My, my hat's off to you and I bow to you.
I'm not really going to touch on a lot of issues because for secretary, in my opinion, it was kind of irrelevant. As for what happened last night, I unfortunately was not present, so I really can't comment. I don't know what the situation was. Um, anyways, please vote for me, and I will serve you guys as best as I Um, that completes our candidates for secretary. Next, we'll start on the assistant secretary list. First up will be uh, Julie Joy. Hey, I am Julie Gillette, sounds like a with with a G. And uh, we're not related, but I bet we have a lot of conservative ideals in common. And I'm running for assistant secretary, and as other people came up and people asked questions about their experience, I was taking notes like a good assistant secretary would do. So a little bit about myself, and then I'm going to answer some of those questions. Um, I've been married for 22 years with the same guy, Glenn Gillette, we met in the Air Force. I have an eight-year-old daughter. I homeschool her. We've been homeschooling for two years. Um, she probably doesn't like it as much as I do, but I know there's a lot of reward in it, and uh, it's also been one of the most challenging things I've ever done. Uh, I've been in Alaska for 15 years. I've been a 20-year Republican in 1992. Uh, Bill Clinton inspired me to be here today. <laughs> and Obama is doing a great job at living in Bill's footsteps there. Uh, I have a 20-year military career. I did 10 years working nuclear weapons in Montana. I retrained at the 10 year mark so I could move out of Montana and see the world a little bit. So I was a logistics planner. And I went to uh, Vandenberg, a missile base of all things, for my first assignment. And then Kunsan, Korea came here and they knew they had me at 19 years left. So they sent me to North Dakota to mine out for my final assignment. But I was a superintendent there. And even though uh, I think their weather's worse than ours, uh, it was a rewarding job. And I was uh, very much appreciated to come back here where it's warmer and less windy. Um, I was a senior master sergeant when I retired. While I was in, I've always served uh, beyond just serving my country, beyond just taking classes. I was a treasurer for the Non-Commissioned Officers Association for several years. I was a treasurer for the top three at 611 here. Um, when I got out, I got a degree in health information technology. I worked for two years at Dr. Sponsler's office out in the valley, he's a neurologist, and then I decided to uh, homeschool, and I thought that would be easier, and believe me, going to work was a break. <laughs> but the other things I've done is I got really involved after the 2008 campaign. I was fired up that we had somebody from the valley actually running for vice president. So I went and volunteered in that office as soon as the McCain-Palin office opened. And shortly after that, we discovered there's a lot of Republicans in the Valley. So in 2009, we started the Valley Republican Women's Club. I'm a charter member of that. I went to that meeting having no idea what I was going to walk into, and I walked out the treasurer. And let me tell you, I had no experience, and I learned real quick what APOC was, and what rules are, and, and what we need to do to get conservative Republicans elected. I was since the 2010, I was vice president, and then the president. And I'm currently the 2011 AFRW Secretary. I serve under the lovely Rhonda Boyles. Uh, I'm very conservative. It's my goal to help the chair in every way possible fill these 59 vacant seats with conservative Republicans. I wave signs for school board people, for city council people, for people running for U.S. Senate. I want our conservatives in office, so I hope that you will support me because I've done all these things and my experience, voter vote, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, I, I've done it all, publisher, I've done it all from the campaign to the Air Force, so um, I'm very competent as a secretary, so please, please, can I have your support? Thank you. Barbara Anderson. Uh, Oh, 
For what purpose does the delegate rise? Just, just a point of interest, Mr. Chairman, uh, Jeremy Rafton, District 26. I'm curious if the role of the Secretary and the Assistant Secretary has anything to do with designing the, the website for the, um, the Republican Party. Typically not, but they do provide support and they can volunteer for other activities, but typically not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is Barbara Anderson, and I'm from Seward, Alaska. That's District 28. I've been married for 31 years to Zachary, and we have four children, all adult now, so I have time to devote to this. I've been a registered Republican for 33 years. In 2004, I felt the need to follow my convictions and support Michael Peruka, the Constitutional Party. And I return every time to the Republican Party to vote when I do do that. However, I'm going to put to rest a question that everybody has today about the protest last night. But you will have to wait until the end of my presentation because I am willing to let you listen to my heart and my conviction. I'm not going to tell you that I am conservative. I'm going to let you listen to me and decide for yourself what you think I am. If you would like to know my qualifications, I'm going to offer this resume. I've submitted it when I offered my um, national delegation application. Anybody can have this to review. I will say that when I was married at a young age, um, I met my husband at 19. Before that time, um, before I began my family and had children, I was legal secretary in Colorado for three years for three different attorneys, um, and he was a district court judge and a city um, municipal court judge. And I worked at a bank as a teller, or not a teller, but a secretary. And so my secretarial skills are old school. So here is my heart. I'm a homeschool mother of four grown children. We are a pioneering family. We lived in a tent for three and a half years on our property. And we built our own home from the ground up. And we endured much. And we know what it is to go through hardship. We really would like to see our children grow up and do the exact same things and have the freedoms that we have had and the opportunity in America to live out our dreams and our independence. But with the quickly changing face of America towards socialism under this administration, I feel it's very imperative that we hold fast to our Republican values because after all, a Republican is named after what our country was founded on and that's a constitutional republic. I would like to reiterate Judy Elledge's remarks. She said there's a time of protest and our convention is not the time or place. However, with tactful respect and hopeful acceptance by my fellow Republicans, and in an effort to put a rest to this question, I would like to suggest and ask you, when will true constitutionalist Republicans, which is what a Republican is, and I've already said that, when will we be recognized by this Alaskan Republican Party as fellow Republicans. Thank you.
District 11, Rex Shattuck, to move an extension of time. To 12 minutes, please. So, so, so asked. All of it. Moved. Point of information. Um, I was notified by a couple alternate delegates that say that the delegates in their district haven't shown up, and specifically in District 25. Deal, deal with the credentials, not with me, please. Well, the problem is they've been dealing with that for a couple hours, and they're supposed to be in the room, and I'm out of order. Please deal with the committee. Well, we can't vote on this if, if our delegates aren't seated. According to page 13, I believe it's section 12, paragraph 2. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Yep. We've already voted on our delegates, and they've been seated. That's done. We cannot discuss that anymore. It's a done topic. But I'm sorry. It's over. We voted. We voted. It's done. Point of order is well taken. Thank you. The, the, the members of the Convention Committee still trying to resolve vacancies of people who are no longer here or whatever. So please take it there. And thank you. Just point of information. How long do they have to wait to be seated when their people aren't there from their districts? That's what they're asking me. Go talk to them, not to me. You're wasting 450 people's time. Thank you. Rex has made the motion to suspend the rules to extend the time. Second the motion, thank you. The motion before the body is to extend the time to 12 noon for the, this activity. All in favor, please rise. We're extending the time to 12 noon. Thank you. Those opposed, please rise. The time is extended. I would like to ask the National Committee folks now to come up. Limit your time to no more than three minutes so that we can have some free. I want to have this vote before lunch.
Jiminy Gate when I was there. Thank you very much, Brian. Most of my success in life has been because of other people and being able to be a team builder. That's what I do. I'm a team builder. I want to tell you that even in my career as a Ford dealer, I want to just read one thing, and that's all. And maybe you can, I, you know, I grew up in a little town in Wyoming. I went to high school there. I went to Wheaton College in Illinois. I became a biologist. I met my wife. My career changed. I took a temporary job in the car business to get her through nursing school. Got married 42 years, 7 months, and 21 days ago. Got four kids, 15 grandkids, and I love being in Alaska. I've been involved in politics since I was in high school. I've held a campaign for Mr. Goldwater when I was a freshman in high school. Uh, I'm effective on your national, as your national committee man. I have been effective. I have been out there. I have got the trust. You can see some of the endorsements from other people that are on your table as well. I'd ask you to take a look at that. I am a trusted member. I will do what I can. I ask you to vote for me to be re-elected as your national committee man. Thank you. And it'll be uh, Glenn Clary, then Peter Goldberg, then David Eastman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Glenn Clary, and I'm interested in electing a new president. If you are, turn to someone at your table and say, I want a new president, and tell them who you want. Right now, do that, okay? Turn to someone at your table and say, I want a new president, and who you want. Now, there's something else that I'd like for you to do for me this morning. In the center of your table, several of these cards, and I'd like you to reach for that because it tells a lot more about me than I have time to tell you about me. And on this card gives you a little bit of history of my involvement in the Republican Party. But if you would read that, I would appreciate it because today I am asking you to consider me as your National Committee Man. See, I believe the National Committee Man and the people on the Republican Party officers should be spread to as many people as possible. I don't think an individual should have double offices within the Republican Party. In other words, I don't think they should be a senator and a national committee man, and I believe our rules preclude that in Article 1, Section 7A, and other rules. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree with that. But I ask you to consider what I have placed before you today as credentials for me to represent you. Because I think the, Republic, the National Committee man needs to go to the National Committee and bring back political figures to help our candidates get elected and bring back funds to the Alaska Republican Party so we can elect a good Republican candidates to represent us at the state and the national level. And I believe that's one of their main jobs to do. Also, to answer the question concerning a, a Rex there, I got up last night after uh, the dinner, and I walked outside, and I met Mrs. Rita Flagg, and I personally interviewed her and asked her why she was doing what she was doing, and I expressed my opinion to her. And if you want to know my opinion, you can ask her and, our, and ask her about our conversation. I hope that you'll vote for me, consider voting for me for National Committee Man. Thank you for your time. I'm Peter Goldberg, Chairman of District 26. I'm a retired Army Colonel with 37 years of active reserve service. All that is necessary for the triumph of the Eagle is that good men do nothing. I hope I can be considered a good man and do what I can to stop the erosion of our freedoms. Some say I advocate my dues to the party. Well, I've served the cause of freedom for 37 years on the front lines. Freedom. I've been a Republican for 45 years, and as soon as the law allowed, I jumped in with both feet. And this was a 15-minute speech once. <laughs> Before casting your vote, I want you to remember
learned that the National Committee man focuses on more than Alaska issues. You've got to focus on national and international uh, issues. Oh gosh, how I shorten this thing. <laughs> I support the Constitution. I've got more foreign policy experience than Barack Obama. <laughs> I know a little bit about it. Skip to the next one. <laughs> I grew up on welfare, but I don't want, I think we need to give folks that are in trouble a hand, but not a hand out. <laughs> I got a degree in biology, which I paid for. Okay, let's see. I believe we should add a little bit of shame on to people on welfare, because that's what's going to drive them out of welfare. Let's see, got a master's in wildlife uh, science, I'm a conservationist. Many of you are. You hunt and fish, you like clean water and clean air just like I do. I'm tired of clean our judges and soft prison systems. I've been a life member of the NRA for 47 years. The right to keep and bear arms is yours.
at our Central Committee meeting, which I have sat on for four years. There was four years to set the rules for the process. It is inappropriate to change them the night before candidates are to pledge themselves as delegates. We are not polished, but we believe in the platform. A party divided against its platform cannot stand. We hold our elected representatives accountable to our platform. If we cannot first agree on elections, fair and open, and let the ballots fall where they may. Favor of suspending the rules for two minutes. Favor of 